Hello, so sewing machine troubleshooting. If your sewing machine's not working properly, what do you do? Well, I'm gonna run through 10 or so things that you can look at. I'm gonna be looking at the Singer Patcher because I get an awful lot of inquiries about patches. I guess they're quite old machines. They normally have a few problems. But what I'm gonna say will really apply to probably any sewing machine, really. And I just wanna be sort of friendly, but clear up front. <laughs> I haven't got the time to enter individual sort of questions about machines. I, I'm doing this film because I think it will hopefully help quite a lot of people sort out problems. I do have sympathy if your machine's not working, but please don't sort of expect me to answer queries. I mean, you can put comments below and hopefully other people will help and chip in. But I'm sorry, I just don't have the time to answer individual queries about sewing machines. Anyway, let's get in because I think we can run through a list of 10 or so things and it should be pretty good. So first up is check your machine manuals. And I know that's obvious, but for most sewing machines, if you haven't got the manual, you can normally download them off the manufacturer's websites, off collector's websites, etc. So in the case of the Patcher, lots of shops actually have the manuals available for download. Not a problem. So download the manuals, check you've got it all threaded through, you're using all the right sort of thread needles, etc. Now I know that's obvious, but I think very often, you know, we all want a shortcut in life and we don't look. So check that through first of all. <clears throat> I have popped uh, previous films up on the needles and thread to use with, with this machine and hopefully that will help you as well. Just to very quickly say, the most common mistake I find with this particular machine is people use too thick a thread and then they wonder why the machine's not coping. I use upholstery thread, so I've got Gutterman's 100% polyester here at the moment and the code number on this one is M782. So it's just ordinary upholstery thread and I find that's great. Generically with machines, the needle is usually the next problem area. And the most common problem with the needle is it's bent, very subtly bent and people don't realize. So if in doubt, swap out your needle, make sure you've got the right needle, make sure it's not bent. They blunt quite easily. And again, you don't really notice it, but that can be a source of more problems. So a nice fresh needle and make sure it's been inserted the right way. Most needles have a groove down the side, as does this patcher one. And with a patcher, you want the groove, as you're looking at the machine, you want it on the left-hand side. But do make sure you've got a nice good needle. What we'll do next, we'll zoom in because there are a few things to say as you go in closer. Next up is to make sure that your tension washers are actually clean. And I've looked at a lot of these machines and so often there's dirt or rust between those tension washers. If they're not really shiny, they're not gonna do their job properly. And you'll find that your thread will get sort of trapped on bits of rust or dirt, and it will upset your tension and you'll get uneven results. So they're very cheap to replace, very readily available. If in doubt, you know, if they look grubby and dirty and rough, replace them. The next most common area of problems is actually the shuttle case. So this is the thing that holds the bobbin thread in the bottom of the machine. So the most common problem with these is that the little point on the end of the shuttle case there is blunt. It's been rounded over, it's no longer sharp. And if it's very blunt, it fails to pick the thread up and you get dropped stitches. So make sure your shuttle case is in good condition. And if it's not, it's best to buy a new one. And this is such a vital component. Personally, I wouldn't buy the Chinese clone ones of this because they're not always up to the mark. I'd get a proper manufacturer original and you'll, you may well find that solves your problem for you. There are further things you can look at with your shuttle case. There's a little leaf spring there. Sometimes dirt gets caught underneath it and you lose the sort of tension on the thread. So if in doubt, again, take that off, clean it. I'm going to talk about tension in a minute because we'll come back to the shuttle case when we come on to tension. 
other obvious things is to make sure that your machine is well oiled. If it's not being used for a long time, give it all a good oil, work it through without any thread in it, loosen it all up. Because machines which have been in storage, very often they go a bit out of adjustment and then once you sort of run them through several times, they become happy again. So just make sure it's nicely loosened up. Next thing to check is this plate here, your needle plate. And what you're wanting to make sure here is that the hole hasn't become too enlarged because on some of the old machines they get very worn, the hole becomes big and it no longer works properly or the edges become rough and the thread coming out from your bobbin gets sort of trapped on the edge. So make sure this needle plate isn't damaged and it's in good condition. And if it's bad on one side you can with the patcher shift it round to the other side. If you find that when you put your lever through the machine that it's getting sort of dragging and it's getting marks on it from the sewing foot then you may need to take the pressure off the sewing foot by adjusting the screw up here. Equally if you find that the lever's not being dragged through your machine, it's slipping, you'll need to increase the tension but this one basically does the tension on the foot and it can sometimes have a bearing if your stitches aren't going right, if they're sort of bunching a bit or just going a bit sloppy, adjust this foot pressure until it's taking the material through nice and evenly and that may well help. So that's another thing. Specific, I suppose, to the patch, although actually all my industrial machines have these foot tension discs at the top here for actually increasing or decreasing the foot pressures. When I was talking about the thread just now, I was saying about using you know, something like the upholstery thread. I have seen quite a few people have problems with these machines because they're using big cones of thread. So it may be a cone like one of these, but actually where the problem usually comes is they're the kind of cones which are loaded so that they're fatter at the base and narrower at the top. And what you actually get as a big cone like that unwinds, if it's fatter at the base, you'll get a difference like tension pull compared to the narrowness at the top. Those sorts of cones are made to discharge from above, not from being pulled at the side and you get these terrible sort of tension differences creeping in. So it is best just to use a straight sided cone. And that's a bit of a funny one, but I've seen a couple of people be caught out with that before. So that's another one to bear in mind. Well, a final area that seems to cause a lot of trouble is tension. And what I mean by that is the thread, when you're sewing on the machine, you get loops forming either above or below the work that you're actually sewing and sometimes the loops aren't very obvious it's just something like the top thread is like a straight line you've got little loops going above it and sometimes it's underneath. Now with tension it's always worth trying what is called your top tension first. So on the patcher it's the top little adjuster knob here People sometimes say, oh, what's this little tension disc arrangement all about down here? This is for bobbin winding. Because when you wind your bobbin, the thread goes across around these plates down to your bobbin. But no, for top tension, this is the easiest one to adjust. And with any sewing machine, there's usually a little dial on the front where you can change the tension. So if you've got... Um, your thread being pulled up, your lower thread is being pulled up too much and you've got loops forming on the top surface of your sewing piece, then what that means is your top tension is too high. Basically the thread isn't being allowed to go down into the leather. So you need to back off this screw. Conversely, if you're getting loops forming underneath your workpiece, underneath your leather, then what it means is your thread from the top is going down right through the lever underneath. It means you need to make the tension higher on your thread so it doesn't go down as readily. So you increase the tension on this. I'll try and simulate 
what I mean just to show you. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to increase the top tension. So I'm winding this screw down and what it's doing is the thread going through the top here now is being sort of crushed by these tension plates. So I've got a very high tension, top tension. What I will expect to see now when I come to sew will be like a straight line of thread across the surface of the lever and the lower thread being pulled right up through two layers of lever and forming little tiny loops on top. We'll see if it does that. <laughs> so there you are, the lower thread's been pulled up and the top thread is lying like a straight line. Do you got little loops from the lower thread? I've now reset the tension to do ordinary correct stitching. So what you've got now as you look at these stitches is there's no loops on top coming up from underneath. The top thread is being sort of sucked down into the leather. And if you look at the other side, again you've got nice stitches there. So the knots are forming inside the leather, which is great. That's a good strong stitch. Now, if you've fiddled around with your top tension and it's still not working, you may need to adjust your bobbin tension. And there's a little leaf spring with a screw on the shuttle case that holds the bobbin and you can increase or decrease pressure on this leaf spring and therefore on the thread by tightening or loosening. And it's the same sort of principle but sort of in reverse. So if you think about it, you want the thread to come out from your shuttle fairly sort of easily. You don't want it to be really tight. If it's really tight, it would be pulling the thread, the top thread down through the lever and looping underneath. And if it's too loose, you'll get the opposite effect. So again, it's a matter of getting this balanced. And generally, the best way, if I show you an industrial bobbin, because it's bigger, it has a leaf spring there. The thread goes underneath that leaf spring and the pressure on that thread is achieved by adjusting this screw here. What you want is for the thread to come out with a gentle pull. So you don't want it to be no resistance, but as you pull it, you want there to be a little bit of resistance. What some people do with the industrial bobbins is they do a bobbin drop test. And basically you suspend the bobbin by its thread. And then you pull your hand up very sharply and the, the bobbin will unwind. So if I were to pull my hand up quickly now, you'd expect that just to slip and let some thread out. So what you're basically saying is the thread's being released under the bobbin's own weight, more or less. The same weight plus a little bit. So that's sort of bottom tension, but I wouldn't go there unless you have to. Always play around with your top tension first. Well, I hope you found a few little hints and tips in all of that. Uh, as I say, that was aimed at the patcher, but the same principles apply to any machine. Just to recap, in order of priority, always check your thread, that you're using the right kind of thickness of thread, and check your needle, that it's not damaged, bent, etc. You've got the right needle in there, the right way around. That's the most common things. Make sure your machine is well oiled. Make sure those tension discs are clean and not so rusty. Do all of that and chances are that will rectify most of the common problems. It certainly has when I've looked at friends machines. Failing all of that, look at some of the other things I mentioned, go online, go on to places like Leather Worker Net and other forums and see what people suggest. Hope that's helpful. As I say, I'm not going to be able to enter into individual problems and queries on this. I've put this film up to just basically try and help anyone who is struggling a bit. But I'm sorry, I just don't have the time to, you know, obviously answer every query. But that's why I've done this film, to try and help people out.
if you do get stuck. I'm not a sewing machine mechanic. I think sometimes people do contact me and think, oh, you know, I'll know all about X and Y. Well, I've only picked up what I have by tinkering with my own machines. And really, that is the way to learn. You have a tinker, you try and sort things out. If you get stuck, I suggest also you just post a comment in the comments and hopefully someone will look at those um, who's more expert than all of us and be able to help you out. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and good luck with your machine and hope it all works out well. Okay then, bye bye, thank you.